Thank you for your lovely letter. Your writing is How very How wonderful good. to hear from Thank you. Thank you for your letter that I very much enjoy reading. I loved reading your story about I James. I understand that your school project is about having grandparents tell you a story about how they grew up and what it was like when they were and younger. And to know that you will be making an animation film with stories from friends and family. I'm going to tell you a story about Boston Parish Church better known as The Stump. There is a story to The Stump. 365 steps to the top of the tower. Days in the air. 12 pillars supporting the roof. The mumps of the air. Seven doors. Days of the week. 52 windows. Weeks in the air. Also, 24 steps leading to the library and six steps to reach the roof of the library. It counts for hours, minutes and seconds in a day. The tower contains 10 bells and I've been up the tower several times. There are beautiful views and I can see my house three miles away. Well, I've got to climb down again now. Lots of love, Nana. I am going to tell you about three of your male relatives who I thought you may find interesting. John A. Mitchell, your great-grandfather, joined the Marine Corps before World War II. But being aboard a ship could be boring at times, so he joined the wrestling team to keep physically fit and to pass the time in a fun-filled way. Before the two years had passed, he was Asiatic Fleet heavyweight champion and won a very large wrestling bout. War broke out and the wrestling championships ended, and therefore he was never defeated. Nathan F. Norton was your great-great-grandfather. He was heard in cattle at the time when Florida was still open range. This meant that most cattlemen did not use fences to keep their herds contained. Back then, they used bullwhips when rounding up the cattle. Boy, could he crack a whip. <laughs> Bernard Quinn III was your great-great-great-grandfather. He was a very large kind of rotten man who became locally famous when he caught a bank robber around Windsor, Quebec. Your great-great-great-grandfather was awarded a gold watch by the Bankers Association for catching the robber and was elected mayor of Windsor in 1910. One day in a pet shop, I saw a family of mice. They looked very unfriendly, so I went and bought one. I left the pet shop with Mickey in my pocket and started to walk home. I stopped at an old military shop and found a small wooden box with a latch and nice hinges on the lid. This would be ideal to keep Mickey in. When I got home, I began to remember that my mother was very, very frightened of mice. I needed to use all my powers of persuasion to convince Mum that Mickey would never be a problem. When Dad came home, I said I wanted to go to bed, and soon after he came in and asked me if I was all right, because I usually try to stay up as long as possible. I brought out the little box and offered it to him. I said it was life, and Dad's face went pale. It won't hurt anybody. It's so small, I added. He looked puzzled and pointed out the writing on top of the box. The word said, Ammunition. No wonder he had gone pale when I said it was live. He must have been very relieved, because he went off and convinced Mum that I should be allowed to keep my pet mouse, and he even made a much more suitable cage for my new friend. This is something that happened in Burma. <laughs> where the villagers respected Nana's family a lot because my father saved the village many times from ravaging man-eating tigers and wolves. I was living in Burma and was invited to go hunting with the Mr. Miran, a very rich man. Because your great-grandfather was a great hunter, Mr. Miran assumed that your grandfather, me, was also a good hunter. Little did he know. We arrived at the marshlands where birds from all over came to rest. There was a long-necked crane standing in the paddy. It was very still. Suddenly, 
Mr. Moran grabbed his gun, took aim at the beautiful bird and shot it several times. But he missed every time and the crane panicked and flew away. At this point I realised that although my friend had many guns, he was as bad as me in hunting. We then decided to drive another 10 kilometres, where we arrived at another spot. Unfortunately, this time, my friend asked me to try my luck. So I grabbed the gun and gave it a shot. Disaster! My aim and my shooting were hopeless, because I kept missing again and again. We continued to laugh at the whole episode from time to time, until your nanny was death. And it always brings me wonderful memories whenever I think about it. When I was 13 years old, I joined the Air Cadets as a probationer and went most weekends to RAF Houston to learn to fly a glider. I recall we had a navigation exercise to buy to Blackpool in a simulator. When I got out, the flight lieutenant said I was the first cadet to actually get to Blackpool. Was I chuffed? However, he hesitated, then said, I pity you were 2,000 feet below ground. I had forgotten to climb to get over the hills. I was teased by all the other guys on the course because I got a card delivered to me every day from my then girlfriend. She worked in a card shop and it showed. Getting her a gift to take home was easy as the nappy sold sweetheart brooches, shaped as a pair of wings. Grandmother still wears her brooch and I enclose a photograph of her wearing it. The most fantastic thing happened in 1956. The Central Electricity Generating Board decided every house in the country was to have electricity installed. The houses in our area only had old-fashioned gas lamps, which were very fragile, and when lighting you had to take care not to touch the mantle because it will crumble to dust. These lamps gave off a very low amount of light, and to be able to read by them you had to be very close. There was commotion as the electricians used spades and pickaxes and dug a trench the length of the street and laid a big electric cable in it. All the mums and dads and kids were at the front of their doors watching the workmen. They then had to go to each house and fit electrical fuses and hook up to the cables. We were fascinated that we could switch the lights on and off with a flick of a switch. We could now think about getting a television, which my father did in 1958. When I was a little girl living in Cardiff, I lived near a very nice park, as well as the usual swings, tennis courts and paddling pool, there was a little zoo. This used to house all the animals that sailors brought home from abroad, but were unable to keep on their ships including parrots, monkeys and snakes. Included in this menagerie was a large grey seal called Billy. Most of the time he lived in a large pool, but when there was heavy rain, the local river would overflow, so allowing Billy to swim out of his pool and around the surrounding area. He once managed to get as far as Cardiff Castle, about one mile away. He was always caught, but I expect he enjoyed his long journeys around the city. There's a monument in memory of him. When my mum, Sarah, was about four years old, she attended a Sunday school class. On one Sunday, she wore a pair of coloured knee socks her mum, my nanny, had bought for her. They were dark blue with bands of red and white, and were very smart. After Sunday school, Sarah was in the car with her two sisters and brothers, together with her mum and dad. During the journey home, Sarah announced to the rest, I'm not wearing these socks again. Michael says they're like football socks. True to her word, she never did wear those socks again. Well, I could tell you lots more. But I think that is enough for I now. hope this is the kind of story you were looking for. It was given and received with love. See you soon. All our love, Nana and Granddad. Love, Granddad. Well, I've got to calm down again. Lots of love, Nana.